Like so many things in academia, this is more of a vocab word than a uh, real difficult concept, but I want to do my duty and show you the difference between crystallized intelligence and fluid intelligence. Okay, and both of these are about intelligence. Okay, so there's not a whole lot to discuss here. It's it's just pretty much examples, but crystallized, um, you know, going to, I guess, chemistry class, you think of a crystal as fixed and solid, like a cube, and then fluid is more like you have a beaker of something, and and it settles at the bottom, and takes the shape of the container, and it can move around. So that's the analogy that they're going for, is crystallized intelligence is facts. And facts don't change a whole lot. You know, once you know that 2 plus 2 is 4, then that's just, that's just a block in your little filing cabinet or, or a file. And it's just in there, and it stays, and according to, I guess, one theory, it never goes away. It's just crystallized and stuck in there. And then fluid intelligence is more like uh, problem solving and being able to be creative. So creative solutions. Solutions. Okay. So if you if you have read the entire library and you know every fact in the world, then you would have crystallized intelligence. But if you if you maybe don't know, I don't want to keep using the same words, maybe you don't know a lot of things, you haven't been to school all that long, but you have street smarts, I guess, but maybe that's another, that's just another set of facts, but if you're, if you know people, I guess, and know how to weasel your way out of things, and how to talk through problems, uh, then you would be fluidly intelligent. You're, you're adaptive. Adaptive. And I would say you can't get very far in life without at least a little of each of these. If you have, if you have all the facts in the world, if you're a human encyclopedia, but you can't, you know, you can't loosen them up to, to actually change the world in any way, then, then you're just a filing cabinet. And on the other hand, if you're, if you're a super genius and you can solve any problem the first try, but you don't have any facts, then it's like, then how do you even understand the problem in the first place? I guess if you don't, if you don't know any, any concrete or crystallized things, um, I guess the the main reason that these are even introduced is that when you're young, you get another color. I'm almost running out when you're young, you have a lot of fluid intelligence. Um, and, and, you know, that makes sense. When, when you're born, you obviously don't have any crystallized intelligence. You have a few, um, I want to say reflexes. What's the actual word? Um, well, it's escaping me now. I, my brain is not thinking of the word I want. Instincts. Instincts probably didn't spell that right, but, uh, you know, you have instincts, which don't really fit into this, they're their own thing, but um, you don't have any crystallized intelligence upon being born, so you only have fluid intelligence, and, you know, you, when, when you're young, every single thing you come across is a new problem, and you have to be adaptive to it, and then as you get older, you kind of have this been there, done that feeling. You, you've you already seen all the new problems, or, or you see less and less, and, and you just have a bigger repository of crystallized intelligence. So, I don't know, just to be visual, I'll, I'll draw a graph of that. This is time, uh, being born, born, and death, death, and I'll use green for fluid, so you start out very fluid, and then it sort of tapers off. I don't know. I, I mean, it, it's not going to reach zero when you die automatically, but it, it declines. 
And then your crystallized intelligence, I'll use the blue that I used up here, actually does start at zero, and, and it's pretty much just steady, just up the whole time. I can't really think of anything else to say. It's just two, two words that you should be aware of. Um, so there you go.